Welcome to another moment in the Word. How do you prepare for communion? How do you prepare for Eucharist? How do you prepare for Passover? And it is Passover, Pasha. And so how do we prepare for that? How do we prepare for Christ? Well, that is exactly what we see in the passage we're looking at. We're beginning the uh, 26th chapter of Matthew, and we're only looking at the first two verses. But don't be deceived. Only two verses? They're full. So here's what we find. Jesus is speaking, and he says, And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. The first word is chi. It means and. It's a conjunction. It's linking what had gone before with what we now have. The next word in the Greek is ginomai. It means to begin or after this, or it has this idea of it coming to pass and a, a process of events that occur. That word beginning is also to become. It is the idea of something that is now taking place that wasn't before. And we find in the book of Exodus chapter 12, God speaking to Moses and saying, saying, this shall be the beginning of months for you. That's really interesting. This is the beginning of the year for you. Well, that's interesting because the Jewish people have several holy days. We call them holidays. And those holy days, one of them is Rosh Hashanah. It is the remembrance, the head of the year, the beginning of a new year. It is the remembrance of the creation of the world. That's usually in September, October. But now God is saying to Moses, no, I want you to start the calendar again. And it begins with Passover. Because you see, you have really, if you're a Christian, two births. One is your natural birth. And that would be Rosh Hashanah. And then you have your spiritual birth. Well, that's Passover. And that's when the Lamb of God had died for you. And you received him. You ate of the Lamb. And you became a new creation. And therefore, a new beginning. And you see it in your life, and that excites you, and it excites me. And the beginning is forever. Remember everlasting life that we had seen in the prior chapter? Well, it says, and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he had finished. And the, the word finished is the word to telestai. It is the idea of having something that is completed. It's the same word that Jesus says from the cross. It is finished. And what is finished? He says all these sayings. Well, that's really interesting because we find that expression, all these sayings, it's mentioned four more times previously. This is the last time. And, and previously, we find that it was occurring, first of all, in Matthew chapter 7. And, and that is the Sermon on the Mount. We have the sayings of Jesus, the teaching of Jesus, and then there's something to be done about what he said. Chapter 11, Jesus had commissioned his disciples after he had commissioned them and described to them what they were to do. Then they were to do it. Chapter 13, when he is talking about the, the kingdom of, of heaven and gives seven parables to describe what the kingdom is like after these things. There's something to be done. And now we find after all these things, what is it that he's referring to? Well, first of all, remember who it is that's talking. This is the great I am. This is God in flesh, known as the Logos. He is the word, the word, the very expression of the mind and heart of God that is now saying all he needed to say. And he's not like you and me that after we deliver a message, we say, oh, I should have, should have included this. God didn't say after he had finished all these sayings, oops, I, I, I forgot something. He said it all. You see, in Hebrews chapter 1, when God had spoken in various ways and in times through the prophets, to the uh, uh, fathers, by the prophets, all of that, the tense of the verb is 
that he continued to speak, hath in these last days spoken, that is with finality, through his Son, who is the Alpha and the Omega. He said all of these things. And what are all these things that Jesus is referring to? He's referring to not only the Olivet Discourse, which is chapter 24 and 25 in Matthew's Gospel, because that he spoke from the Mount of Olives with only his 12 disciples. But also in the chapter previous, which would be chapter 23, and here he is talking to the Sanhedrin, and he is talking to the Pharisees, and he warns of the leaven of the Pharisees. And what is the leaven of the Pharisees? Pride and mer mercilessness, having arrogance, having where they're taking advantage of others using religion. And then he warns of the leaven of the Herodians. And who are the Herodians? Well, they were Jewish people in alliance with the politics of the day, with the Romans. And he warns of aligning ourselves with government. Patriotism may be in its, its own place, may be okay, but that is Jesus is warning of aligning yourself because that's what leaven is. Leaven is a mixture. It's taking the things of this world and aligning them with the things of God. And so he's telling, he's telling them clean house. Why would they clean house? Well, because in Exodus chapter 12, the actual beginning of Passover is on the 14th of Nisan. On the 14th of Nisan, they are to take the lamb and the lamb was to be killed. And it started even before that. It starts on the 10th of Nisan. The 10th of Nisan is when they would select the lamb. That would be what you and I would call Palm Sunday. That is the time in which Jesus was selected. He was named. He's the son of David. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is here. And then four days later, the preparation of Passover is the 14th of Nisan, and that is the time in which now the lamb will be slain. That's preparation. And then on the 15th of Nisan is actually when the Passover is. Well, now Jesus is saying to his disciples, after these sayings, this is all preparation. And as you're reading the word of God, as you meditate every single day, Ask yourself, now what? So what? How is this to be applied? When you pray, don't just pray for insight and understanding in the Word of God, but pray that you might incarnate the Word, that you might live the Word, that you might walk in the Word. Now, as you look at yourself and you see then there is the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they actually start at the same time. How do you prepare? Well, we are to clean house. That's what Jesus did. It was on Monday, right after Palm Sunday. Jesus goes back to the temple. He cleans house. The same thing that is done in Jewish homes around the world, where we have this, what we call, it is, the Redekhat Chamatz, and that is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It is the search for unleaven, for leaven. It is the search for that which is evil. It's the search for that which is sin. You see, Israel in the Passover was leaving Egypt. It was leaving bondage. It was leaving sin. It was leaving all of the things that are the lust of the flesh and the pride of life and the things of this world. And, and, and now, now, knowing that they were going to a promised land and that they would be in a wilderness, but they would be given matzah, they would be given uh, something manna from heaven that God would give. We find the preparation for Passover, this Feast of Unleavened Bread, how can you cleanse yourself? Well, it says, clean your hearts, O you sinners. And, and, and how do we do that? We don't do it by the flesh. Rituals will not clean you. 
and, and, and observances, even of holy things, will not clean you. In, in Galatians and in chapter 3, Paul writes this, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ, who had openly set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the works of faith? That's a question. Are you going to receive the works of of the law by faith, or are you going to do it by the flesh? And so Paul says in verse 3 of Galatians 3, O you who are foolish, are you foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? Are you getting rid of the things that you are doing which you know are sin? Are you getting rid of them by the works of the flesh, or are you doing this by the Spirit of God? And now he says in verse 4, Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? He therefore that ministers to you in spirit works miracles among you, doth he does, does he work them by the law? You are clean by the spirit that is working within you. Jesus said, Now are you clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. The Word of God reveals what it is that is leaven that needs to be removed. You can't do that in the flesh. You can't do it by works. You can't do it by your good intention. You can only do it as you yield to the Spirit of God. And so now Jesus is now saying all the things that he needed to say, verse 2, you know, now the word know, is oida. It is not gnosko. Gnosko is I came to learn. I came to understand. I studied. I sat under a lot of lectures. Then that's what that word is. He didn't use that word. He used the word oida. The word oida means you knew in instinctively. You knew intuitively. You knew. You knew as part of your DNA. You were raised, and these were Jewish men. They knew when Passover was. And he says, you know that after two days, so now we have a good idea of when this is actually taking place. It is now very, very close, the day after tomorrow, and that we will be in the Feast of Passover. Literally, the word feast of is not in the Greek, Passover, Pasha. And what is the Passover? Well, remember, this is the time there's going to be a death. There is the death of the lamb, and the blood is applied to the lentil and the doorpost of the house, or else there is the death of the firstborn. The firstborn, that which is of the flesh. So either the flesh dies or the lamb dies. We know that you and I who are believers, if you die once, is because you were born twice. But if you were born only once, then you will die twice. Once is the flesh, and then you will have the second death, which is spiritual and is eternal. And so Jesus says that after two days, the Passover, and the Son of Man will be betrayed. What happens? Well, the word is betrayed is in the present tense. It's happening right as Jesus is talking. He is telling his disciples at this very moment, Judas Iscariot is contriving and complicit with and in negotiations with the Sanhedrin and their plotting and scheming against him. Now, it's so interesting. This is happening, and we'll see the next two verses tomorrow, where the Sanhedrin are plotting the Passover. But notice, God in his providence, as well as his omniscience, he knows that's happening. But he is also preparing for Passover. He's preparing from the foundation of the world, even before it was laid. He gave himself for us that we then might be born again. And so consequently, he is to be betrayed. That means handed over and to be crucified. Jesus now is describing when it will take place, where it will take place, who will execute it, and the whole purpose to be crucified. 
Why crucifixion? The Jews stoned people that they thought were worthy of death because of murder or adultery or or blasphemy. In this case, that's something the Romans did. The whole world is responsible. And Jesus is making it known. He came to his own. His own received him not. And he came into the world he created, and the world knew him not. Do you know him? Do you know him as your Savior, as your Lord? Are you preparing yourself to meet him, knowing that he is coming again? But in knowing that, you yourself are prepared because, not because you ate matzah. No, you have allowed the Spirit of God to change your life. And thereby changing your life, you cleansed your life. And by his blood, you are able to live in a way that glorifies him. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. And thank you for the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. And thank you, Father, that we live for you. And we live walking in his steps. Help us, Father, this day in sharing the gospel, sharing the Passover, sharing the Eucharist with others that don't know him, that they might have communion with you, the only true true and living God. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.